In this video, I'm going to cover a new kind of network, NKN. And if that name sounds interesting or bizarre to you, that's because it's trying to create the new, new internet, and not many projects try to do that these days. So I'm going to cover a little bit of what that means, what consists of a new, new type of network or internet. I'm also going to cover why they need such a thing. Why do we really need to reinvent the internet and a few simple use cases for such a project. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about how they're going to do so with the proof of relay. And then finally, I'm going to talk about their token use cases and what I think about this project. I do want to say that everything covered here is my personal opinion, not financial advice. And for full disclosure, I did participate in their ICO. And I'll tell you why I did that in this video. So let's start off by how I found out about this project. And it's not because of Bitcoin Gandalf over here, but rather Yang Bo Li. So Yang Bo Li is the other co-founder of Unchain. And you probably recognize his partner, the Big Green Buddha, Da Hongfei. So Yang Bo Li led the Beijing office and worked on the DNA architecture platform on OnChain. So this is the distributed network architecture that OnChain is using in China. So in that sense, he was very much a big player on both OnChain and did a little bit of the coding for Neo. And now he's starting this all new project NKN. So now, why is he starting this new project? Why is there a need for something like NKN? And it's quite simple. And it's something that we don't think about all the time either. You guys probably have heard of decentralized storage projects to store space, for example, IPFS, or maybe even decentralized compute projects, for example, Ethereum, and maybe even Golem. But what about decentralized network? See. Network is something that we don't really think about all the time, but we feel if it messes up. For example, if your YouTube video starts buffering or you're in a crowded place and your 4G stops working. You see, when it comes to network connectivity, we really need it, but we don't have direct control over it other than choosing our service provider. So it's not like storage where you can just add hard drive space or maybe even computation where you can just upgrade its CPU. But rather with the network, this is something that's really fundamental to the internet architecture but we don't really have anything or we don't know any projects that try to solve this. And that's what NKN is trying to do. It's trying to provide a new way for the internet to operate. So that's a huge task. How do you rewire the internet? Why do you need to rewire it? And the first application case is quite easy to explain. It's about internet usage. We hardly use our internet all the time. Maybe when you're watching a 4K video, that might use a lot of your bandwidth or when you're downloading a large file. But the rest of the time, your internet is not used. So what if you can share that with your neighbors? So if you live, for example, in a crowded area near maybe a big train station or somewhere like that, then what if you can share that extra connectivity, that the extra bandwidth that you have with maybe cell phone users that can't get that 4G coverage? Maybe, for example, for me, what if I want to start streaming, start streaming when I'm just walking around? Well, I've had various very poor experiences with that. And sometimes when you're just browsing for the nearby Wi-Fi, most of them are just private. And the ones that aren't, they're really hard to connect to. So what if there's a protocol? What if there's a way to share that with other people? What if there's a way for us to just use that nearby bandwidth? What if we can just connect to a few ports on Wi-Fi and then just use that spare bandwidth that have lying around to finish that stream and then of course disconnect when I'm done. So this is the idea behind NKN. It's very deep in the protocol. What if there's a protocol for us to share that Wi-Fi without really sharing who we are, but rather because we have a token and we have a currency for use, why can't we just use that directly connect to them? And then of course, well, charge for what pay for use, right? It's a lot easier than going through that sign up sheet and also viewing multiple websites and paying by credit card. That's that's the archaic way of doing things. What if you have a native currency that allows a automatic bridging of all the Wi-Fi networks near you, you leverage all their power and you just pay for use. So this is kind of the first use case of NKN. It's really to provide 
a protocol, a communication mechanism to be able to leverage that extra bandwidth. And that's why it's a new kind of network. It's something that really hasn't been done before. And it's so kind of abstract in thought that we never thought something like this would be possible. And this really extends beyond just sharing a nearby Wi-Fi or allowing yourself to be a node in the space, but rather it allows this whole internet, the whole ISP infrastructure that the internet is built on. For example, right now you can probably see that there is public root servers and you, if you're really tech savvy, you know how the internet is routed. But it could be improved and right now it favors the bigger parties and that's why we have issues like net neutrality. The problem with networking in the US is that unfortunately the big guys, the big ISPs have a lot of leverage and eventually net neutrality might not be a thing anymore and it might be the case that we don't have a fair competition, a fair space in the internet anymore. So in this sense, NKN is going to provide a way for the smaller guys to compete by offering them a new currency to route internet. And that way you kind of level the playing field. So that's the scope of this project. The scope of this project is massive. It's really abstract and it's really to deal with a network level kind of system, which we don't really get exposed to much. We don't really look at how routing affects us, but Obviously, routing does affect us because sometimes, for some reason, your internet might be super slow, and that's because you're passing through a slow relay node. So it's really to deal with this issue of how the internet is connected and how to optimize that connectivity to the next level. So in terms of competition, I think a lot of people kind of mistake this project and think, oh, maybe it's competing with something like Substratum. I have no idea how that came about. I saw that on my channel. But really, honestly, there's nothing out there that's comparable to this project in terms of scope. It's trying to solve a massive issue in terms of routing and networking. And it's got the right people to do so. It's got the people with the right amount of experience. You know, I was joking about Bitcoin Gandalf here, but Bitcoin Gandalf invented, you know, public key cryptography, the Diffie Hellman <laughs> protocol. Well, he's old school to the maximum extreme and he is advising this project. Of course, Yan Ball, he's been on, on chain and he's been working on DNA project, which has to do with distributed network as well. Bruce Lee, he's been in Nokia and he's been at Google dealing with innovation. And Elon, I talked to as well in my interview and he really knows what's happening with networking. So in terms of the academic level, this is a top tier academic project. They have some really hard to understand concepts and big words on their project. For example, cellular automata, what is that? You know, at first I thought this has to do with the cellular phone, but actually it doesn't. It has to do with communication. Basically, this idea is that when blockchain or information is relayed, it's relayed to its neighbors and the neighbors form a kind of a local consensus. It's very similar to how our brain works. When our brain uh, works and neurons are fire, um, the communication just bridges and crosses um, in a path and then it forms and lights up a region of our brain. This is very much similar. So the cellular automata is a way of just lighting up that region forming that information and making sure that when information is relayed, it's not transferred to everyone on the whole network. This is important because when it comes to relaying information, you don't want to do the full decentralized model of maybe Bitcoin where the packet of information is sent to everyone added to the blockchain, but whether when you relay it, you just want to go to a few neighbors. Then we have the idea of proof of relay. This is an interesting concept and this is what we don't really directly think about. So if you query something like Google, you assume that it's a direct connection. I'm talking to Google directly, but actually it's not. In terms of the internet, it bounces all around the internet. And then depending on how far you are physically away from the server, you might bounce through a few different relays. And this is what NK is trying to reward. So instead of proof of work, it's rewarding proof of relay. What if you can relay that information and that internet? This in essence helps small providers because internet providers are ISPs because well, they're a smaller relay, relay node and by getting paid for or getting an extra payment for relaying that information, they stand a more fair advantage or stand a fair playing ground against the big ISPs. So at least they're brought on an equal level with different ISPs. 
In terms of the token usage, it's used to tokenize network resource. So this is two things. Well, the relay, so the proof of relay, you get rewarded tokens for that. And also you get the tokens are used for, of course, sharing bandwidth. In the example I said earlier, where you can pull together resources and you have that, well, currency to relay that. In terms of additional uses for this, you can probably don't realize, but decentralized apps actually need to communicate with each other too. So what the NKN is trying to do is they're trying to allow and use this token to allow decentralized apps in the future to communicate to each other without central parties, without central servers. So it's kind of building the network infrastructure for the communication of the future. So this is what NKN is about. It's rebuilding the internet at a network level, basically changing how we even communicate with each other. And that's so hard to conceptually, conceptually visualize because, well, we don't really deal with any of this stuff. Our ISP does that. And in that sense, a project hasn't come along to tackle this problem for some time. So this is one of the projects that has a very big aim. Now, this project is not without a criticism as well. So I've seen and I've been watching different videos to see what people are critical of. So one of the first things here is, I think, communication. So here um, they have a 2018 release of their white paper and economic model, followed by 2019, the beta launch. So people were looking for more roadmap points. And I think this is definitely something that can improve upon more milestones for the project for us to evaluate what's going on. And this is a rather more difficult project to evaluate its kind of progress as well, because it's something so new and so different. But that being said, I talked to Bruce and they are working with a few different telecom companies for partnerships and trying to really make sure that they understand the worth of this project. Now, the other criticism comes with the idea of a research project. This project is something so new and so different that it feels very research based. And in that sense, it is new. And that's what Bitcoin was initially as well, is Bitcoin solved the issue of a decentralized store of value. It solved a decentralized database issue. So in that sense, this is something that's trying to solve a decentralized network issue. So it is very new. But at the same time, you can't win without being brave. In terms of their token sale, they only sold around 5% of their tokens in their public sale, and they had a lot of private capital raise, most likely from, of course, Neo Global Capital, because, well, you know, Yang Bo and Da Hongfei know each other quite well, and they've been working very closely as a tight knit team. So there's definitely interest in this project, but the evaluation does appear a little bit high. So this is, there's definitely a lot of speculation here, and I feel like this is something you want to be aware of going in. It's trying to achieve a lot. So the potential for this is huge. It's trying to break a $1 trillion industry and trying to fit inside of that. I feel like in terms of what they kind of do, and even in terms of sh that sharing um, idea, the idea of sharing the Wi-Fi, that's going to come a while later. So after they build the network, after kind of more um, commercial applications use this protocol, that's when you can see a big difference. So it is a more far out, but at the same time, it's achieving a dream that no one thought of. So that's my thoughts of this project. The applications that it can bring about are insane, but at the same time, it is a very, very new idea. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Do you feel the power and the potential of this project, or are you concerned about how much time it will take for this to develop. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to click the little subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and click the little notification bell to be notified of new videos like this when they get released. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.